number three from the October 2023 International A-Level Mechanics M1 paper from Edexcel. This question here is about a hammer which is used to hit a peg into soft ground, a tent peg. The hammer has a mass of 1.8 kilograms and the tent peg has a mass of 0.2 kilograms. The hammer and the tent peg are both modeled as particles and the impact is modeled as a direct collision. Immediately before the impact, the tent peg is stationary and the hammer is moving vertically downwards with a speed of 10 meters per second. Immediately after the impact, the hammer and the tent peg move together vertically downwards with the same speed, V meters per second, find the value of V. So here we have a classical example of a um, question dealing with momentum, um, you know, conservation of linear momentum, right? So let's have a situ little sketch of the situation before and after, okay? So we have before, we have the hammer, and we have the peg, okay? So the hammer and the peg. So before the collision between them, okay, the 10 peg is stationary. So this is going at zero meters per second. Um, I'll draw that over here. Oops. Okay, so the 10 peg is stationary, so that's zero meters per second. And the hammer is moving downwards with a speed of 10 meters per second. The mass of the hammer is 1.8 kilograms. 1.8 kilograms and the mass of the but you know what I'm going to do I'm going to draw let me just do it like this sorry okay so the mass of the hammer is 1.8 kilograms and the mass of the peg okay is 0 0.2 kilograms All right and after this is now after we have, um, they're both together as one. They've joined as one particle, one big particle. And they're moving with a common speed of V, downward, of course. So, of course, here what we're going to do is, as th this is moving down, this is, you know, we're going to take down as positive. That's a sensible thing to do, right? If we take down as positive, then the total co momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So, before we have the momentum of the hammer, which is its mass times its velocity, plus the momentum of the peg, which is going to be its mass times its velocity, which is, of course, zero. And after the collision, okay, their total mass is going to be 2 kilograms. It's going to be 1.8 plus 0 0.2 times their common speed. Okay, 1.8 plus 0 0.2, good. So this is going to give me um, 18 equals to V, therefore V is going to be 9 meters per second. 9 meters per second immediately after the impact. Okay, then it says, find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the tent peg by the hammer, stating the units of your answer. So they want the magnitude of the impulse. The impulse is the change in momentum of an object. So we can consider the change in momentum of tent peg, or we can change, consider the change in momentum of the hammer. Both of them will be the same impulse. The directions would be opposite. The impulse exerted on the uh, tent peg by the hammer is going to act downwards. The impulse exerted on the hammer by the tent peg is going to be exerting upwards, okay, because the hammer caused the tent peg to move down and the tent peg caused the hammer to slow down. So the impulse of the, of the peg on the hammer is up and the impulse of the um, hammer on the peg is down. It doesn't matter which one we find because both of them okay, are going to basically um, you know, give us the same answer. One will be positive, the other one will be negative. Okay? The one that's positive okay, will be if we find the impulse of the hammer on the peg. The one will be negative will be the impulse of the peg on the hammer because that will be upwards and we've taken down as positive. But they will have the same magnitude and that's all we're concerned with, finding the magnitude. Okay, so let's have a look. Which one should we choose? Um, both of them involve 
uh, find or using something that we have to find afterwards. So it doesn't really matter. Let's let's choose the one that uh, we're you know the exert the the magnitude exerted on the tent peg. So look at the change of momentum of the ten, of the tent peg. So we can say that the tent peg. Okay, if we consider the tent peg. Okay, let's consider its mass is zero point two. Its initial speed is zero. Its final speed is positive 9. So the impulse exerted on it is going to be 0 0.2 times its final velocity, which is 9, minus its initial velocity, which is 0. So that's going to give you 9 times 0 0.2, which is going to be 1.8 Newton seconds. Okay, that's the... the um, the units of impulse, because impulse is also force times time, and it's also mass times velocity, change of velocity, so it could also be kilograms, meters per second, can be force times time, can be newton seconds. Both of them are considered as impulse. Okay, so let's just do a check and see what happens if we found the impulse exerted on the, on the hammer. Okay, so the mass of the hammer, Okay, so we have again mv minus u. In this case, the mass of the hammer is going to be 1.8. Its initial speed was 10. Its final speed was 9. Okay, so we're going to have here um, the impulse exerted on the hammer is going to be 1.8 times its final speed, which is 9, minus its initial speed, which was 10. So you end up with negative 1.8. It's going to be 1.8 times minus 1. So you can see we get the same answer, but opposite signs. This is negative, why? Because we've taken down as positive, and the impulse exerted on the hammer is upwards, it slowed it down. Whereas the impulse exerted on the peg is positive, we, because it's, 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 in, it's, it's made it move downwards. It was still, it made it move downwards. So its impulse is acting down on the peg. So in the end, the magnitude of the impulse, okay, the magnitude of the impulse, we, do, we don't have to write any signs down, we have to minus or plus, plus, we don't have to mention any direction. We just have to mention the magnitude of the impulse is going to be 1.8 Newton seconds. And there's the answer to this part of the question. So now for part C, it says the ground exerts a constant vertical resistive force of magnitude R Newtons, bringing the hammer and tent peg to rest after they have traveled a distance of 12 centimeters. Centimeters. Very careful. Because we're going to deal, we have to deal with SI units. So straight away, that 12 centimeters, you have to think about it in terms of meters. And that will really affect your question. Okay, so be very careful. So 12 centimeters, if you want to convert it to meters, you divide by 100, so that's 0 0.12 meters. Very, very important. Straight away, you should take note of that. So basically, you've got this peg and this hammer together. It's one object. Their weight is now 2 kilograms, okay, as we know from here, 1.8 and 2, 0 0.2, that's 2 kilograms, okay, you have their weight acting down, that's 2 G Newtons, and you have R acting upwards, the resistive forces, and they're moving down, okay, but they're decelerating, the acceleration is going to be negative, we need to find the value of R, to do that, we need to use the, the, the resultant force, which is, if we take down as positive, we have 2g minus r equals the mass, which is 2 times acceleration. Okay, so I know the value of g, I need to know r, a. How can I find a? Well, we have some information that should help us here. Because we know information about this peg after this hammer and this peg together. We know that they go through a distance of 0 0.12 meters. Be very careful about the units here. We know that initial speed was 9 meters per second after the hammer hit the peg. It was moving right at the beginning at 9 meters per second, and they were brought to rest. Okay. And we want to find the acceleration. We don't know anything about time, but we can see we have S, U, V, and A. So we can use the formula V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S. So V is 0, U is 9, so that's 9 squared plus 2 times A, which we have to find, times S, which is 0 0.12. So we end up with um, negative 81 equals 
um, that's going to be uh, 0.24a. So a is going to be negative 81 over 0.24. So that's going to be the acceleration which we can find, or which is going to be given by this, it's going to be negative 81 divided by 0 0.24, 0 0.24, which gives us minus 337.5, negative 337.5 meters per second squared. Now that is a very large acceleration, of course, because it's going through the ground, so it's going to be you know, slowing down very quickly. So now we have what we need to find R. We have 2 times 10 minus r equals 2 times negative 337.5 so we have 20 and that's going to be minus r equals let's work that out times 2 that gives us negative 675 so we have 20 plus 675 equals r so r is going to be 695 newtons and that is the force the resistive force acting on this peg and hammer as it goes through the ground and that concludes the question question number three from the october november 2023 paper mechanics m1 from edxl um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region on the screen at the end of the video you'll find other questions dealing with uh, momentum and impulse in the playlist which will be linked over this and you'll see questions dealing with this topic, which is dynamics, which will be linked in the playlist that will appear over here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.